Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends. And we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy because now it's time to rewind. Well, two's company, three's a crowd. But tonight, three's company because I have two friends, one friend that hasn't been on the show in a long time, and one friend that's never been on the show. So I'm very excited to welcome back Jeff Bogaiski, who was in my very first episode talking about Psycho and Seven. Hello, Jeff. <laughs> Hello, <Welcome> everybody. <laughs> and I also want to introduce everybody to, you might already have heard of him. You've heard of his podcast, Friday the 13th, a very cool, very queer, popular podcast. Andrew Huff, welcome to Real Estate Rewind. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk about this movie today. I am so thankful that you guys are here. Andrew had responded on Facebook when I like put out my list to put out my feelers. And then Jeff commented and I, uh, Jeff, I remember a while ago, I rewatched this great, crazy movie five years ago for its 20th anniversary. And I feel like that was when I was working with your husband, Tariq. And mm -hmm. I feel like I mentioned that to Tariq and I feel like you guys watched it too. And I just remember like Tariq and I at our desks were like humming this amazing score. Ooh, right? It's very <laughs> sultry. So um, I knew that you love this movie. So I'm glad you're here too. Cause now we have our, we have our threesome. Our there threesome. we go. Hey, <laughs> now in our threesome, who do we want to be? Who's Matt Dillon? Who's Denise? Who's our girl Nev? Do we have a preference? I do not have the chops to be Denise in this. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's got she's got so much going on, and you know I forgot Denise is actually a, an amazing actress in this. Of course, it's very campy; a lot of it's over the top. But I don't know the tears this time were really working for me. She is quite good. I thought her stares are pretty intense, oh. right? Lots of snarls, lots of staring. Oh my God. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. I will say I did grow up in the country, so I guess I technically qualify as, you know, as a Susie. <laughs> oh, okay. I love that. And you got your, as you told us, you have your craft shirt on. Can you lift I it do. up a little bit more? Oh yes. You know, it's so funny that you're wearing the craft shirt because on my latest rewatch today, I thought something tells me Susie's favorite movie is the craft. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just get that vibe. Um, what about you, Jeff? So, okay. If Andrew is Susie, are you Sam Lombardo? Hi, Mr. Lombardo. <laughs> or are you Kelly Van Ryan with the smolder, the, the stairs? I don't know. I feel like I'm not, I mean, I am an educator. So yes, you maybe are. I should be the guidance counselor. <laughs> okay. I, maybe I should All just right. go full blown, you know, bad guy. Uh, you totally are. And I, I mean, it's appropriate. You, yeah, that's you. So then, okay, great. I'm going to take my top off and I'll be <laughs> Kelly in my little white socks and my little, little girl shoes. That's so freaky, by the way, that that's like a really <laughs> weird little detail for me. Um, but anyway, okay. So we're going to talk about the movie in a minute, but I want to catch up with you guys quickly. I'm going to start with you, Andrew. So you have been working on a great podcast called Friday the 13th for five years now. We were just talking about it. Tell us about the show for anyone out there who isn't sure what Friday the 13th is. Tell me about it. Sure. Yeah. Um, Friday the 13th, we're a horror podcast. Uh, we're, we mix it up a little bit though and we talk about horror in real life and then we match it to horror in the movies so um, if you think about it we did uh, one time where we did Sorority Row and um, what was the other movie? But they're both campus movies. So they're both college campus movies. And we paired it with kind of what's happening at Notre Dame with the state of like their football program and the rape culture that goes on there and how that's all yeah. covered up. And, and so we kind of like mix it up. We try to take the first half of our show pretty seriously and talk about some, you know, in real life, like horrific stuff. And then we try to yeah. lighten it up by watching a couple horror movies and really have having fun because that's what it's all about at the end of the day is having fun so yeah, but yeah really, we've been going strong for a while you, now and you take us on a ride for sure there's yeah. <laughs> some high highs and like serious lows yeah but yeah. i mean good for you for going this long and you're just getting more and more popular it's amazing what's your yeah, secret thank you so much um perseverance <laughs> there you go there yeah you go. and Love having it. a consistent schedule because if as soon as you're off yeah. that schedule then it's like well i don't really want to do it anymore or i right. uh, or you find a reason not to do it next time or you know what i mean i'm gonna throw it over to you jeff hi jeff 
I so okay, fill us in. What are you doing tomorrow? Well, actually, tomorrow I'm just uh, playing husband and dad. Oh, okay. But it's Sunday Sunday is the uh, half marathon. Yeah, it's the New York half marathon. Yeah, starting out in Brooklyn, going down Flatbush, heading into the city, taking the Manhattan Bridge, and finishing in Central Park. So, oh my gosh, have you been training for this for a while? Uh, No, you know, (laughs) um, I've been training. Um, for oh, one second, but I've been training. So, so if you hear kids, it's just, it's just the kids. There's, they, they know the rules. Just be in the other room, but, um, they're big fans of wild things. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so awesome. So, okay. Your last marathon was, you said four years ago. The last half was four years ago and the last full was in 2014. So, wow. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. Me never zero for me, <laughs> but I, I'm waving from afar and, and cheering you on. That's amazing. Now, did you, cause I know in the, in the New York running scene for marathons and half marathons, did you have to do like a lottery or anything? Or is this so, not like that? Yeah, I got lucky. I did the lot. I know like people that are really like gung ho about it. Um, you know, they do the races and stuff like that. So most people, they do the races, they do the nine plus one, and they try to get involved. I was just like, name and a hat, cross my fingers, hope I get in, and I got in. So yeah, yeah. I was just nice. needed some inspiration. Good That's for it. you. That's great. What a great way to kick off spring. How, <laughs> how would you guys classify this movie? I know we can easily look it up, but in your own words, I'll start with you, Andrew. How would you, like, is it, we know it's like a thriller. How, what are the words you would use? Sexual thriller, noir, what would you say? I would say that this is, I think this does fall into a noir, but it's like a, a specific, a specific kind of noir. Mm. I would, I, I would classify this as like almost like sleazy noir, if you yeah. will, because it's, it's acted over the top. It's like, uh, it's kind of all over the place with its twists and turns, but it also does have a good narrative about sticking with people and not trusting people. And yeah. really when you go into this, I don't think I ever imagined what this movie was actually about going into it the first time um, because of the way it's set up. So I would call it like a, a sleazy noir movie. (laughs) Yeah. I like that. How about you, Jeff? How would you classify it? Like in your own genre terms? I mean, I guess I've kind of piggyback off Andrew. It's kind of like, um, cause it's not really a, I mean, it's a thriller, but it's not a whodunit, but kind of a whodunit, right. You know? And I remember, you know, I was gonna tell you when I saw the remember the trailer. Well, I for yeah. hold up, so hold up. I have my Wild Things ticket stub right here. Oh my god, love it! Oh my gosh, <laughs> love it. Who did you uh, go with? Do you remember? You know, I was I was racking my brain. I'm like, who did I go with? Who would I've gone with this movie? I'm like, I I didn't have a girlfriend, right? Um, right. Uh, maybe maybe I think it was like these two guy friends, and we were like, okay, this is fun. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know? Interesting. Yeah, okay. I think it was, yeah. Two guys from high school. Yeah. I, yeah. It, it's sleazy. I don't remember being so campy when we saw it in the theater. Yep. You know, I think we were like, oh, it's Nev Campbell. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's this new girl from Starship Troopers or mm-hmm. something. And then, you know, Matt Dillon. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Andrew's statement. Yeah. Long, very long. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear that. I I yeah. feel like I would call this, yeah, you're right. It's not really a thriller. I mean, it's thrilling, but it's sort of mm-hmm. like a, Um, it's not really a mystery, is it? It's sort of like a smutty, sexual caper. It's not a caper. (laughs) I don't know. But it's it's more than just like a, well, it's obviously more than a drama. It's more than a comedy. Sometimes sometimes it's meant to be funny. I have to say Bill Murray is so funny. Um, Even all these years later, he does make me laugh. But, and then at times, of course, and it's, accidentally funny and we'll get into that for sure welcome to the town of blue bay hi mr lombardo hi girls so where's your house mr lombardo let's rewind boys let's go back to march 1998 march 20th when this film came out i'm going to just briefly set the scene for us chime in with your thoughts i'm going to tell you what was going on in pop culture and then we are going to nerd out over our favorite scenes favorite <laughs> lines there are many i i quoted <laughs> lots of lines in my notes okay on the music side the top song was getting jiggy with it which i feel like is appropriate for this movie to come out you know during that era destiny's child no 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 and madonna's frozen were also in the top 5 songs at the time on the theater side since jeff i know oh look at you with the cocktail 
It's St. Patrick's Day, right? Can we say that? It, it, it totally is. You're right. I I don't have. I just have seltzer. But I mean, there's rosé in this cup. Oh, good, good boy. Drink up, drink up. I need champagne to, you know, put all over me and guys. <laughs> um, on the theater side, since I know Jeff goes to lots of theater, lots of concerts. I, guys, it's shocking. He's available tonight. So thank you for being here. <laughs> um, but on the theater side, I thought this was cool to say because this was such an iconic production. On Broadway, the revival of Cabaret, starring Alan Cumming and Natasha mm. Richardson, had just yeah. opened just a couple days before this, so that was huge, right? Mm -hmm. On the TV side, Dawson's Creek was airing its first season. If you haven't heard out there, I do a, a long, very thorough, very fun episode all about Dawson's Creek that was last month. Um, here are some other shows that maybe you guys know some of them. They all like really spoke to me. So anyone familiar with Bug Juice on the Disney Channel? That was that was kind of fun. A camp uh, reality show. Anything? I'm gonna no? say uh, no. Okay. How about you, Andrew? Anything? I was I was definitely more of a Nickelodeon person okay. growing up than a Disney Channel. But I that name sounds super familiar. Yeah, Bug Juice was. I believe it was a camp either in New Hampshire or Maine, and it was super fun. It was a short show, but I'm sure it's online somewhere. That had just premiered. What else premiered on ABC? TGIF. Two guys, a girl, and a pizza place with Ryan Reynolds mm -hmm. back before he was yeah. like super chiseled. That had just premiered. Oh my God! Get this. The MTV famous world famous docuseries true life was about to premiere right after this it was late march that premiered and then the teletubbies were about to premiere on pbs so there you go huh. a little bit of uh, something for everyone at this time you know and two then, guys a girl in a pizza place has one of the best halloween episodes of all time if you can they? find it yeah really? it's very good yeah wow andrew you know you're two guys a girl in a pizza place yeah, i was obsessed with that show were you i remember yes. watching it i loved tgif back in the day but i have no memory whatsoever i just remembered ryan reynolds was in that no memory whatsoever. So, okay, the Halloween episode. Good to know. Got to find it. And then um, last thing is popular movies other than Wild Things. Titanic was still number one. It was, I think this was week 14 it was in theaters. Aye, I mean, aye, aye. isn't it crazy? Like, no, no movie could do that now. Can you imagine any movie being number one in theaters for that long? It's. I think it's pretty much impossible now. People are just interested in things and attention is fleeting. And Right? There's yeah. Just yeah, it's. It, I, I've mentioned this before on our show, but like, it is kind of incredible how fast movies come to home theaters now. I mean, oh, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, you waited a good six, eight months for a movie to go to VHS. Oh, at least. And like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's so different now. And a well, full even, year, I remember, to HBO. Remember, you had to wait like a full year. Now it's shorter. What were you going to say, Jeff? Yeah, no, I, was say, I, I mean, I saw Cocaine Bear, which if oh, you yeah. have not seen it, it is spectacular um nice. and also it's available on your tv <laughs> like it came out two weeks ago like it's already on apple you can rent it for wow. i think you can buy it for 25 dollars or rent it for 20 or something like that. right but. other popular movies the man in the iron mask also starring leo or the star of early 1998 primary colors hush such a guilty pleasure with jessica mm. lang and yes. Gwyneth mm -hmm. oh. can we talk about that from <laughs> 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 We just watched it recently, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, what is going so on in this fun. movie? Like, what? There, there's, like, no, like, nothing. I mean, something happens, but, like, nothing happens at the same mm. time, right? Yeah. And then it just ends. <laughs> oh, and Gwyneth and Jessica and Jonathan Sheck? Is that how you say his last name? Shake? Sheck? Um, yeah, wow. Well, I just remember that being so, even as a kid watching it for the first time, I was like, this, I know already, is just such a guilty pleasure. Like, you just know from the get-go, like, okay, this is, like, yeah. pretty... Pretty she's low gonna, level. She's gonna chew that scenery up, right? She is. Oh my god, so much chewing. Classic. And then the wedding singer. That was another popular movie. I just talked about that in my last episode. So that was that was a, a big rom com at this time. But in comes Wild Things, where innocence can seduce. He started rubbing my shoulders. Accusations can destroy. I'm innocent. You guys do sex crimes, right? When was this that Sam Lombardo gave you the ride? Did Sam Lombardo rape you? Yeah, okay, he did. He pushed me to the floor. I want to hear, Jeff, I'll go with you first, since mm -hmm. you were talking about your movie ticket stub. So do you think, so you saw this in theaters. Did you go opening weekend, do you think? or uh, Yeah, it says what does March, it say? 23rd, March 24th at... Um, and I went to a matinee. Oh. <laughs> so it must have been during the, must have been a weekend because I did not cut school for this. Um, okay. It was, 
uh, ticket was four twenty five, four dollars and twenty five cents. So now, interesting. So I wonder if March twentieth was a Friday, because if so, then twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. Then the twenty fourth would have been a Tuesday and a matinee on a Tuesday. Maybe it was spring break. Mm, it is sort of a spring break movie. I just yeah, realized that. Yeah, could have been. Maybe. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just wow. Yeah. That's so funny. So you were in high school. Uh, yeah, that was my senior year of high school. Oh, how yeah. iconic. How about you, Andrew? When did you first see this movie? I remember that I blind bought this on VHS from like the, I don't know what it was, probably like a Meyer or like a, you know, a, a, a Best Buy or Suncoast yeah. or something. Just yeah, because, I mean, this is coming, I mean, this is coming off of Scream. Mm -hmm. Everyone's in love with Nev Campbell. Good you know, girl. Denise Richards is like fresh on the scene. Everyone's in love with Denise Richards. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy it. It was probably like, it was probably like twenty five dollars for that stupid VHS. I'm especially, sure, especially <laughs> especially at Suncoast. I loved Suncoast in my mm. mall back home, but oh my god, it was very easy to blow a lot of money on like just a couple movies. Yes, wow. Okay, good. So you blind bought it. I love that. You just went for the VHS. You saw the the girls staring at you. That poster is iconic, <laughs> right? Yes, Their slick there back is. hair. I mean, Nev looks downright kind of scary. She's so dark, and then the guys are like, you know, like down below oh love it, love I wanna, it. mark i want to say i think i had that as a screensaver like oh, a screen, the background on my computer because it, it was it was so like sexy and sultry and it's oh, just yeah. like you know dirty I think, and yeah it's so smutty and dirty but sexy mm. and like intriguing and i think they're all just so committed like on the poster and also in the film they're all just giving you looks and they're just serving the smolders and it's like yeah, I'm going to go on this ride with you, right? Mm -hmm. I forget when I first saw this movie. It wasn't in theaters, unfortunately. Although I definitely saw Scream 2 in theaters a couple times. Um, but I think this was probably like a pay-per-view, like rental on TV once it, you know, probably later in 98. Fell in love with it. I agree with you, Andrew. I was, they had me hooked on Nev Campbell. I remember playing the trailer a lot on my old computer. It was very pixelated. The sound was tinny. And I was like, ooh, Blue Bay and like Nev with this red hair. And do you guys remember when Scream won, um, Scream, the first one, won the MTV Movie Award in the summer of 97? Nev was there with her Susie look. She had the hmm. red hair and the dark, like, so she was starting the promotion early. And I remember I was like, why does she look like that? What the mm -hmm. heck? And mm -hmm. then in comes Wild Things. So yeah, I just remember jaw dropped so crazy so in i'm gonna sound like an absolute fool guys but i'm gonna just tell you this so i love nev campbell so much still do um she's not in scream six we know but at least we're talking about her here in wild things scream six is pretty good by the way if you haven't seen okay. it i saw it i specifically did not go opening weekend to support nev i went on a weeknight and it is <laughs> it's worth it um but I loved Nev Campbell at this time so much that I want to say maybe a year or two later, after seeing this movie a bunch of times, I had an audition in New York for, I want to say it was As the World Turns, one of the soaps. And the role of this boy was in a courtroom and he was like a witness to something. And I loved this movie so much that I'm like, I'm just going to act just like Nev Campbell does in Wild Things. You know, it had nothing to do with the character. So <laughs> like her? Were you going to sit like her? Like I sat like her, up? Jeff. I sat like her in the chair with my like leg up my knee up and i was and i was like really kind of hunching over and like very kind of like nervous and like totally wrong for the character i did it the first time and i remember the casting director said okay put your leg down right remember you're in a courtroom and i'm like and i think i might have said i was like well nev campbell has her leg up in wild things <laughs> and, and they're like all right and like you know you you want to change your posture right don't hunch over i'm like and i just remember i was annoyed i was like no no that's not how you do it in a courtroom right oh, mark so, you must have still been picking your fingers too right like, yes mm. yes i love that she's doing that she's hunched and she's like and I was, I was very quiet. I remember she said, you can speak up. And I'm like, no, you don't get it. You don't know courtroom. Okay. <laughs> so that's how much I love this movie. So little, little nerdy. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Right. And appearances can deceive. Kelly said that we should do this to hurt Mr. Lombardo. She found out that Mr. Lombardo was in love with her mom. And that was it. So you stay here. So let me introduce just our main players. We can talk about them. So, Starts with the script, right? Writer Stephen Peters. He had written some smaller, more obscure things. This was really big for him. He wrote a film called Dead Center. Um, now, I'm sure you guys saw. The script was a little different 
not too much different, apparently. The director, John McNaughton, did say that they pretty much stuck exactly to his uh, script, but they brought in another writer to just fix some dialogue. But there was, apparently, a gay scene that we didn't get. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about the lack of a gay scene? Are you okay with it, or do you really wish we got it? Because I think I, I would have liked to have seen it. I mean, what do you think, Jeff? Uh, yeah, I mean, we had the threesome, right? Yeah. We had the we had the lesbian, you know, the the bisexual threesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was good. I don't know okay. if we did an extra uh, man on man. I mean, now maybe, but not 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 then. Yeah, well, the financiers mm -hmm. apparently just were like, that's way too far. And apparently, Matt Dillon was gr glad that it was not included, but Kevin Bacon, who also produced this film, really liked the idea and wanted to do it and i say thank you kevin i am on your side what about you andrew are you are you cool with it not being in there or do you wish it like that other twist was in there you know i'm good with it not being in there because too many people are already falling in love with matt dylan in this movie like literally everyone is falling at the heels of of matt dylan and point. to have another person it's kind of like yeah, we get it. Like he's he's a good looking guy, but it's not it's not this. Is there no other uh, is there no other attractive people in South Florida? Like what's happening? <laughs> like, so Blue Bay right. in Blue They're Bay. So right. yeah. In Blue yeah. Bay, yes. Uh huh. Oh, I love that Blue Bay. Um, it also sounds like um, because later in the year was Disturbing Behavior, which I feel like is this movie's like cousin. And mm -hmm. Disturbing Behavior was set in like another bay, not in Florida, but somewhere else. But if I just want to like get all the Bay movies together, yeah. And, like, you Antonio know. Bay with the fog. Ooh, was, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, the fog. Yes, exactly. Yes. Well, Mark, um, if you're talking about in uh, Bodega Bay in yes. the Bird, right? I was going to say, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff is going to be on my other episode. We're not going to do it tonight because I haven't rewatched it. <laughs> Maybe next week we'll talk about the birds, another bay, another animal movie from alligators and crocodiles to to birds. <laughs> um, but what was I saying? Yeah, you know, you bring up a good point, Andrew, that you're so right. Everyone is so, from the get-go, everyone is so obsessed with Sam Lombardo that you're right i do actually kind of like that like can someone not be attracted to him because even perez daphne rubin vega i know i forgot that the camera zooms in they are about to kiss and you know the horn honks but like everyone's <laughs> obsessed with him that yeah maybe it's actually kind of nice that at least duquette you know can control himself like he's just a guidance counselor what's the what's the know, what's the sexual desire here i don't he, understand he has a pension you know it's like yeah. Ooh, so sexy you know it's like <laughs> I don't know, guys. He, it's working for me. He is so good looking. In oh, this in this movie? movie? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh I mean, even though it's God. like a couple years after um, To Die For, oh, um, yeah. he is he he was doing something right. The, oh, the my God. So, Things know. were working. Although, and we'll get to it, his face during the three-way scene is a little goofy. He's doing like an Elvis like <laughs> thing. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. All right cool you know but no everything else is working real well for me personally those t-shirts fit nicely um but then everyone does everyone looks good so okay so that's steven peters the director john mcnaughton how, this was kind of random maybe you guys saw this too he had you know directed some tv i think homicide and you know different things but he was up until this point and still beyond most well known for directing henry portrait of a serial killer huh yeah right so pretty extreme and then you know pretty cool to have that and then this i mean the guy just goes for it and then let's go through our lead actors we'll just go through the main four our actor and executive producer kevin bacon he described the script as the trashiest thing he had ever read but every few pages there was another surprise he was hooked he knew he had to do it he was just in sleepers which i do like that's a pretty heavy drama and picture perfect i think that was with jennifer aniston the year before yes yeah mm -hmm. yeah um, actor Matt Dillon was just in In and Out, which I've talked about on the show. Love In and Out, where he's blonde, and also Albino Alligator, which I never saw, but I remember seeing the big poster at the video store and just loving that title, Al mm -hmm. Al Albino Alligator, right? <laughs> and fun fact, I was looking up everyone's ages because Matt Dillon, to me, I think it's just that thing where like when you first see a movie, that person is just always older than you. But Matt Dillon was only like thirty three or thirty four. And he seems so much older to me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Does he seem older than that to you guys or no? Yeah, it feels, like, that feels about right. You know what yeah, I mean? I don't know. I, like, it's weird now, but I'm like, I'm older than he was in this movie. I don't look like that. I don't look <laughs> like, a, you know, he's already kind of got that, like, in a good way, like the, the dad bod kind of going, like, he's such a man that I'm like, dang, I don't. I think I it's the know. voice. He's got that yeah. really, like, you know, man, uh, you know, that. Yeah, like, like he's kind of been through it. Right, right. Yeah. Rugged, 
you know? Right, a little rugged for sure. Yeah. Then we have Nev Campbell, our girl. As as we know, she had just come off Scream Two. She was currently still in Party of Five. Season Four was airing, so she was the it girl. I mean, God, I love her. Actor Denise Richards. Wow, what a splash! Literally in that bathing suit. Oh my God. Um, she I like just your done, stroke. Like, I like your stroke. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, she, like we said, had just done Starship Troopers, which I also love. That was a big, big thing. So she was uh, kind of newer ish on the scene and becoming quite a star. And I was looking up her age. It's funny. She was like 26 or 27. Nev was about 23, 24. And then, yeah, Kevin Bacon was older. He was 39. Um, so it's just interesting to, I'm always curious, like, how old people are when they're playing high school school because denise i mean not that 27 is old of course but she looked younger i think she kind of looked the part i don't know what do you guys think she didn't look too old yeah she looked, no i think yeah yeah like how how kids how people do in movies right like yeah. 10 years older than teenage right, right. Yeah. yeah yeah very very soapy so well and they leads. definitely like they definitely like dress her in a certain way too to make her feel younger like like you mentioned like the little lace socks and oh the like God, buckle yeah. shoes and like I, yes. I when I when we, we were looking at this, I also looked up their ages. I was like, I actually thought she was younger in this movie. If anything, I would have swapped the ages. I would have thought that Denise would have been twenty four and Nev would have been twenty seven. Yeah, but. yeah, uh huh. I know it's funny. Nev always, <laughs> even in Scream, like she she always looks like so good and so young, but just there's like such a wisdom on her face or something that makes her seem older than that. But um, but yeah, yeah. And you know, something I forgot, I forgot. Those are our four leads. But in the opening and closing credits, Teresa Russell, who is acting for the gods, honey, <laughs> she is in between Nev and Denise. Poor Denise, who is giving a lot of action here. She is fifth on the list. I thought that was interesting. I think this uh, was maybe before Denise had you know, her and her agent had the power to, you know, get her up there. I just thought that was kind of weird. Huh? What was, I know, I know Teresa, I used to, well, Teresa Russell for me used to be on what, like the late night, like soft core adult movies on HBO. So like last, not last seduction, but like things like that. And I'm like, mm. I remember being in theater. I'm like, good for her. You know, <laughs> like, finally yeah. getting in an A-list movie. Like, yeah. you know, she's got her, We've seen her boobies three three hundred times, and now you know maybe we'll see them today. And I think yeah, we do. See we them. actually do. Yeah, we yeah. we she yeah. gets her own sex scene early <laughs> in the film. She's she's yeah. showing it off before the younger kids do for sure. <laughs> yeah, she is. I I so badly want to see, and I feel like I told Tariq this Jeff a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I need to see a live version of this film. Maybe it can be a musical. I don't care. It can be downtown somewhere. I need to see Wild Things live, and I need the mom especially to be played by a drag performer oh <laughs> I, just need, right? yes. I just need so, she is so over the top <laughs> from the get-go like can't you just imagine seeing like a drag queen just in her whatever i think she's in her underwear or a bikini or something like oh is that sam lombardo <laughs> right yeah 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 well you know they did that for showgirls they like about 10 years ago they had a like the musical parody of showgirls playing down on 42nd street and it was the best thing ever. I mean, I feel oh. like they can do that same thing with oh Wild. Oh my God, absolutely. Yeah, because Showgirls yeah. and Wild Things are, are related for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I think you could even do the top, the, th the three main girls. So the mom, Nev, and Denise, all as drag, as oh drag stars. Yes, yeah. thank you, Andrew. Yes, absolutely. That's what I wanted to say, but I didn't want to go overboard, but thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Next week will be part two of this discussion. And in the meantime, please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram. Bye.